Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about those tricky rolled hems. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. Whoopsie! Some rolled hems are a little more challenging than others. Um, some of you that follow all my videos and subscribe, thank you so much. Um, but as you know, I put out a video a few months ago, how to sew a perfect rolled hem, but it was mainly for fabrics on the grain. So I wanna show you a few other techniques. So yeah, I'm gonna show you how to put the rolled hem edge on the bias and on the circle. These are the types um, of hemming that people have the most trouble with when they're doing a rolled hem, understandably. Um, the reason why you have trouble with the bias is because the bias has a stretch that you wouldn't have if, if it was cut on grain. So um, this that's where that challenge comes from. And then obviously the challenge in the circle comes from as you grow further out on the circle, um, there's more fabric and you're having to roll it up into a smaller encasement. So this is not technically an encasement, but I think that's a good visual word for how I'm trying to describe it. Um, so don't take the technical definition of encasement there. But yeah, it's gotta be rolled up into that. I will give you one hint. When you're dealing with a circle or you're having to do a rolled hem, on an angle, the smaller you can get the roll, the easier it's going to be because you are rolling less fabric into that seam. So always keep that in mind. Um, a lot of times I've seen um, circle hem tutorials and they make this big wide rolled hem um, and you know, thinking that that would be easier. It's actually harder. Go ahead and get that roll super tight and it's gonna be a little bit easier. I would even get it smaller than this probably. Um, so that way you're just fighting with trying to get um, the smallness of it together. You're not fighting with trying to cram piles of fabric inside this tube. So we'll go over all that. Now, if you have watched my other rolled hem tutorial, how to sew the perfect rolled hem, this is basically the technique that I go over in that video. So you may want to hop over and watch that video in its entirety, but I felt like it bears repeating. Um, someone kind of uh, came after me in the comments about, this does not work if it's sewn on the bias. Well, this is sewn on the bias <laughs> and it works fine. So I wanted to just kind of hit the highlights of this technique. This is done in one step, as you can see, but I want to reiterate what is so important, the steps for this. You use number one, a small needle. Number two, that left hand is going to be really pulling the fabric taut from the left and behind the needle. So watch my finger. See my index and middle finger back there to the left? That is critical. The third point is that when the fabric starts to curve, you sew it on the curve. You don't force it to go through the machine straight. You sew it on the curve and then you correct that at the ironing table. So I just wanted to show this again. This type of rolled hem is going to be your fastest, um, your least expensive because it's one step. Uh, one way that it's, uh, or two ways that it's going to suffer compared to some of the other techniques that I'm going to show you in the video is your roll may be a smidge larger. And then also, um, if it does do a lot of stretching as you sew on the bias, uh, when you iron that back out and, and make it straight, you are going to have, um, the thread's going to be a little bit more loose than what you would have with some of the other techniques. It doesn't look bad um, just in terms of a comparison. So you can see this curve that is formed in the fabric and you can see me kind of pouncing on it a little bit. I'm gesturing how I'm going to iron it. We're going to get that curve out of there. So here we are at the ironing table. First, I'm gonna go along with the curve just like I did when I was sewing and I'm gonna just supple the fabric up and then I'm going to kind of get it a little bit straight. We're not going for perfection yet. 
I'm just going to kind of smash down gently on those little roller coasters. And then I'm going to keep working. I'm brushing the iron inward to the curve. And here's the final look of the roll. Now this is the second technique. This is going to be a two-step. So where you're going to uh, put this is you're going to do your first step one roll too long, okay? So you're not going to want to press this to uh, where the floor is or to the finish length of the hem. I am pressing this a little bit long because we have one more roll to go, okay? So I kind of held it down with pins and I'm going to get a nice crisp edge on there. Again, this is, this is the second method. This is the two-step um, rolled hem for when you are sewing on the bias. If the first method doesn't work for you or you need a teeny, teeny, tiny edge, this is the one for you. You can see I'm using the Taylor's Clapper to get that edge nice and crisp. And I have my left invisible zipper foot on here and a fresh size 9 ballpoint needle. A tiny needle is going to give you a tiny hem. So always keep that in mind. So here I'm sewing on the very, very edge. As close as you can get to the edge, that's going to give you a smaller rolled hem in the end. So I'm going to do that along the length of the sample. Okay, and now we need to cut that excess fabric off. Um, actually, let's take a break and have a muffin for a minute because we're doing a really great job. <laughs> okay, applique scissors. And we're over here at the cutting table and we're going to slip that paddle in underneath that excess hem allowance. And we are going to cut that away. All right, so I kind of sped things up for you a little bit, but you're going to cut to the very edge as close as you can get to that seam pretty much. And then you're going to do one more roll at the machine. It's, you're going to find this very simple to do. Um, that row of stitches that you did is just going to have everything stabilized nicely for you. So it's going to lay nice and straight. You're not going to have to work with this quite so much at the ironing table as the other. It's not going to be stretched out like the other one was. And you can see this is a teeny tiny rolled hem. So when I would do this hem, as like I said, when it's a more expensive hem, when it needs to be very, very tiny. Um, now, because it does have two rows of stitching in it, on the underside of the fabric, you're going to see two rows of stitching. On the outer side, you'll only see one. Um, and the, the roll is actually going to feel a little bit more dense um, because of the extra thread in there. I know it seems minimal, but you really can feel the difference. Isn't that nice and neat? And here it is up close. You can see the two rows. And these are the two samples together. Okay, so now I'm going to show you the circle hem. And I'm going to show you two methods for this one as well. And then after I show you this, I have a third uh, type of rolled hem that you can do when nothing else is working. This third one usually will do the trick for you. So I'm going to show you on this tight circle hem, uh, first the hand rolling method that's just one pass. Uh, the reason why I want to show this again is I want to reiterate, do you see me sewing that curve? I'm sewing in the curve. I'm not fighting the curve. So um, like I said, if you get these pointers down, the outward pressure, the tiny needle, the sewing in the curve, um, and as you can tell on the circle hem, that outward pull is not quite as important. Sewing in the curve is more important for this one than it was on the bias strip. But if you can remember those three pointers, um, the one-step rolled hem is going to save you a lot of time. Um, and it really does tolerate a lot of curve. So here you can see it's doing the little roller coasters again just a little bit, but it's still very, very neat. I'm just going to spin this around and I'm going to do the two-step rolled hem on here and I'm going to make this super quick. The method is pretty much the same. I just wanted you to have a quick little example of how it looks on a circle hem. 
Remember what I said in the beginning when we were at the ironing table, um, the smaller the rolled hem, the easier it's going to be to get a perfect, um, a perfect circle hem. All right, so I just rolled that in. You know, we lost maybe a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna cut that excess off. And then I'm going to put it back through the machine for the second pass, just like we did with the ones cut on the bias. And I've got this in high contrast for you. I am so sorry about my little trigger finger being in the way. That trigger finger. <laughs> always in the way very hard to shoot around that trigger finger but you can see I am doing that one last little roll and I am keeping the curve in the fabric as I sew and let's take it to the ironing table okay same thing uh, we're just gonna press this edge um, any little bumps as you can tell I didn't go all the way around this is just a sample but any little bumps just press them out nice and flat now, one thing I did want to show you, whenever you uh, press a hem or are practicing pressing hems, go ahead and pick it up and check out the drape. Make sure it is draping nicely and you can look at it from both directions and we're going to look at both hems. Um, again, there's not a huge difference in the finished product. Um, the two stuff is going to have two stitches on the underside, but is usually going to be a little bit smaller roll. And don't forget what I mentioned in the other video also, if you do have a very stubborn place, just go ahead and roll it once or twice, just perfect, get it perfect on the edge, even if it's a little garbly underneath, press it, train it for a couple hours, come back, undo it and re-sew it, and a lot of times it'll be more cooperative. Now this is the third method that I wanted to show you. I almost never do this so much that I actually don't have this product in stock. I am using regular interfacing here and I am steaming it to my bias strip. I'm just steaming it just so it'll barely stick. Steam it again, barely gliding over. And then I'm gonna come in and do that downward press to fuse it together. But what I want you to imagine this being is actually what they call a dissolvable interfacing. So if you press that onto your hem, it is going to stabilize it like no other. You're gonna eliminate all stretch. It's gonna be just as easy as sewing a tightly woven fabric on the grain. Here I am doing the two-step rolled hem just to really do everything we can to make this edge perfect. Now, the, the reason why I don't do this very often and I try to go ahead and solve the problems with the other two techniques is because when you are done with this, you do have to wash the garment to dissolve that interfacing. Um, but if you have a problem child hem, this is going to fix it. Look at how nice it lays even without it being ironed. I hope this has helped you. Please leave some comments down below if there's some other tips and tricks that you have. Don't forget, hit the like, the thumbs up button. It helps me so much. Share and subscribe. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you wanna get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.